Hey everybody, today I'm going to be uh, reviewing the 1959 original House on Haunted Hill. Um, it's directed by William Castle, a famous uh, kind of low-budget B-movie director. He directed a lot of other famous horror movies and low-budget uh, thrillers. Uh, the film was written by Rob White, whom a lot of you may know. He was a famous writer and he also had some good novels. Um, and stars Vincent Price, the horror classic actor, and Carol Omar. And um, they both play eccentric millionaires, with Carol being um, Vincent Price's wife in the film. Vincent Price plays Frederick Lauren, and Carol Omar plays Annabelle Lauren. So, yeah, and what it is, they invite five people to this house that they're being rented uh, to for a haunted house party. What it is, they have to, they're promised $10,000 if they can stay in the house for a full 12 hours uh, from like, from like 9 to 8 a.m. or something like that. Not, didn't try with the math there, but <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, Whoever stays in the house more than ten thousand, not just one. So, um, so eventually, they all the people become trapped in there, and they don't have any option about spending the night. The caretakers of the home, there's caretakers too in the home. Uh, they leave a, a around around midnight, and so once they leave, there's no way out. Like the door is solid steel and like a vault. The windows all have bars on them that even any jail would find self-respecting, according to uh, Vincent Price. And so, yeah, this there's also a few uh, kind of references to other things in this film, such as, you notice, um, Carol Omar plays character Annabelle uh, Lauren, but notice Annabelle, and think about Annabelle Lee, uh, trying to think what's that from the Raven, anyway. Edgar, Edgar Allan Poe, so I, I didn't find that a coincidence. Uh, it's similar kind of horror type setting, chilling and killing by Annabelle Lee. And what happens with, yeah, spoiler here, what happens with Annabelle, um, Carol Omar's character in the later in the movie, she gets thrown into a vat of acid in the cellar. And so really chilling and killing her. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not sure if I'm the only one who knows that. But anyway, so... A few other people uh, that play, play in this movie, Elisha, Elisha Cook, uh, Carolyn Craig, Alan Marshall, Julie Mitchum, Richard Long. Um, let me just say, this is a really badass film. This is a great movie. Um, some people might find it cheesy now, but if you compare it to... I mean, the, the, in my opinion, this, this is probably the best horror movie of the 1950s. I mean, this is just a gem. Um, I mean, you just can't do much better than this. This was before it all became cliched. This was at the height of horror, in my opinion. And it's just a great movie. You have the one of the original screen, Scream Queens, um, who is um, um, played by uh, Carolyn Craig, Nora Manning. Um, her screaming is just uh, perfect. She is the perfect screamer. She has uh, the casting for this movie was great. Um, she has that kind of cute little girl type look, who's you would think scared of the dark and whatnot, and it works perfectly here. Um, this movie is also legitimately scary, especially when I was a little kid. I was horrified by this. Um, and now I almost laugh at some of the badass moments that I know are coming. But this is really one of the scariest movies I've ever seen. And um, it's really effective. And the plot twist is really good. Uh, there's a few subtle hints in the beginning that um, the psychiatrist, Dr. David Trent, who's played by Alan Marshall, is more than meets the eye, as is uh, Vincent Price's character, um, Frederick and his wife, Annabelle. But anyway, so I'm not going to completely spoil the plot, but 
a few things I found interesting. The two caretakers, who are these old, blind, or deaf people, um, somehow, the wife, the caretaker wife, or whatever, uh, is in the basement when Nora goes down the basement early on in the movie, and seemingly tries to scare her. I think, possibly, the caretakers were trying to scare everybody, or at least Nora, away. Um, from the house before midnight because they knew that the um, Frederick and his wife are, are, were dangerous. And so I think they uh, tried to scare him away. Now, I don't know how the lady caretaker managed to do this. She basically floated across the floor and um, found that kind of amazing. But anyway, uh, there's so much cool stuff in this movie. Um, how Annabelle along with uh, the doctor uh, fake her own death by hanging, and everybody believes she's dead. Um, I mean, this is it's really good. Some good jump scares in this movie. Um, really good. Um, it's not too long of a movie. It's about an hour, uh, 15 minutes, actually, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, yeah, it's just one of the best movies of the 50s. Actually, in one list of mine, I had it ranked as one of the 100 best movies of all time. Best American films, that is. Uh, I mean, it's that good. You know, some people may be from more, some younger audiences may be more familiar with the 1999 remake, House on Haunted Hill, which was crap, of course, in comparison. And, um, but yeah, this is, this is the film that inspired it all. It, the ending is kind of a cliffhanger. It leaves you dangling at the edge of your seat, really. Um. The two would-be murderers seem to get their justice due when they are thrown into the uh, old wine vat of acid. And um, it kind of leaves uh, Vincent Price's uh, character, Frederick Lauren, it leaves his fate up in the air. And all this occurs before like 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. So the movie ends kind of in a foreboding manner with the fate of the other party goers in question. Now, I'm not sure if there's any real evidence throughout the film of any real ghosts, because a lot of this stuff can be explained through very elaborate tricks and setups. One thing is for sure, though, um, uh, 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 Carol Mars character, uh, Annabelle Lauren, she had to have been a master planner in all this. Somehow, she was able to, um, after everyone thought she was had killed herself or somebody killed her by hanging, she was able to go outside the house and appear on, like, the second story, the second floor or third floor, about, um, outside Nora's bedroom, outside the, her Nora's window, and appear to throw rope in the room, which coils around her. Um, similar to that uh, low-budget 1987, I think, film, Prison or whatever, but <laughs> that's a different matter. matter. Um, so I'm not quite sure how that was done, but apparently um, Annabelle Lauren, I don't see how else she would have been able to have done that trick had it not been, um, had she not had access to outside. Now, whether... Um, whether uh, David Trent was able to, was in on all this too and got in, somehow managed to get invited when he knew all this about the house is kind of an odd one. And um, Elisha Cook, who plays Watson Pritchard, he seems kind of, not to say dumb, but kind of in the dark the whole time. And he doesn't seem to realize that some complete strangers can come into the home and become qu quite quickly familiar with all of the odds and ends of the house and can pull these elaborate tricks. Um, but yeah, at the end of the movie, just leaves you kind of hanging. Uh, will the real ghosts start to haunt after all this? Are the ghosts the ones that caused all this murderous rebellion in the house that night? It's just a really cool movie. It'd be nice to have seen a, a sequel not one of the 2000s or 90s sequels, but like a similar, not long after this movie was released. 
a sequel 